Yes, hello, my name is Walter Stridick, and I will be your host today for the Unitronics webinar, Servo Made Easy. I'd just like to do a quick sound check before we get started in a few minutes. If you can hear me, maybe you could just um, uh, signify that in the question box or something so I can confirm that we are good. Thank you, Sergi. Thank you, Ronald. Greg, thank you. Okay, you can hear me. Um, I have three minutes until the top of the hour. So um, I ask that you just wait patiently and, and we'll get started in a few minutes. Thank you. Hello again, this is Walter Stridick, your host for this today's webinar. Uh, we'll just wait a, another minute or so uh, for some uh, folks to uh, complete their sign-in. Thank you all for joining us. We'll get min uh, started here in, in a minute or so. Thank you. Well, hello again, everyone. This is Walter Stridick, your host for today's webinar titled Servo Made Easy, EtherCAT with Unitronics. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for spending some time with us. I, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Walter Stridick. I am the Motion Control Business Development Manager for Unitronics here in North America. With me is Thomas Gomes. Thomas is one of our senior application engineers and 
the North American Motion Control Specialist for Unitronics. So thank you again for, for being here. I'd like to kick off the webinar with a quick question. And I'm going to launch this question right now. So it should pop up on your screen. And if you could just uh, quickly uh, provide some information uh, so we can ensure that this webinar is valuable to all the attendees. Responses are still coming in. I'll give it another couple seconds. It looks like the majority of our attendees today are classifying themselves as somewhat experienced, uh, a little over one half of the attendees. 20% uh, are very experienced, and then the remaining 30% uh, have minimal experience or never used Unitronics. So I do hope that you find the webinar interesting. Uh, there is a question box um, on GoToMeeting. So as we go through and you have questions, uh, please send them. And uh, Thomas and I will ensure that they either get answered during the webinar or we will follow up with you personally to, um, uh, to get you the answer that you need. Thank you. Just a, a quick review of Unitronics and our products. Uh, as many of you know, Unitronics uh, offers a complete line of PLC controllers. Most of them have built-in HMIs. Some have separate HMIs. We also offer to the market a wide range of IO options and IO slices. We are very proud of our Industry 4.0, uh, the Industrial Internet of Things, and our cloud control. Uh, also, we offer a full range of servo motors and drives and VFDs. Since our founding in 1989, Unitronics continuously innovates and expands our product offering to better serve the industrial automation market. As you can see in 1989, our first PLC HMI unit was the M310. And as we've uh, uh, innovate and uh, develop new products, gets us up to 2022, in October of 2022, we offered coordinated axes for our EtherCAT servo products that includes the gearing function blocks and camming function blocks. And we'll be diving into that um, in just a few moments here. At this time, I um, invite you to stay connected uh, throughout the webinar. If you can, uh, we'll be making a special offer for those uh, who are in attendance. So uh, stay tuned. The benefits of, of the Unistream and Unilogic in motion control. So Unistream is, is our main and newest line of PLCs. The Unilogic is the software that runs the Unistream uh, PLC family. And our motion control products today is focused on our servo motors and drives. So. When you're using Unistream and Unilogic and our motion control, you're going to get a product that's been developed and supported by Unitronics. Our customer support, our application support, our engineering support is award-winning and I would say second to none uh, in the industry. Uh, also, when using the Unistream, Unilogic and our motion control, you're getting backed up by over 30 years of leading PLC controls and servo motion technologies. Our software and hardware platforms are established and proven. And 
Most importantly, when using Unistream, Unilogic, and Motion Control, you're going to find a simple integration between the controller and the motion hardware and the software to make it all happen. And that's uh, very easy to develop and to execute onto your automation hardware. So again, number four is really the focus of today's webinar and the, the best reason to use Unitronics. As many of you know, our controller software is provided at no cost. You can find that on our website. And I mentioned before our world-class application support. So a big shout out to our application engineers and customer service folks who do a very good job in taking care of those who purchase and use the Unitronics products. And last but not least, we do offer a wide range of motors, drives, and cables. These products are in stock and ready to ship. So uh, the next couple of slides, I'll talk more about the hardware, but please keep in mind that our products are in stock and ready to ship. When it comes to servo drives or servo amplifiers, we offer 15 various torque and power options. And we offer three input power products. You can select the drives that run on 220 or 200 to 230 volts single phase. You can purchase drives that run on 200 to 230 volts three phase, or you can purchase the drives that operate from 380 to 440 volts three phase. And there you see our uh, power ratings going from 50 watts all the way up to five kilowatts, or almost seven horsepower. For our drives, our communication offering between the drive and the PLC is limited to two communication protocols. But we have chosen the most popular two protocols and the most advanced protocol, which is EtherCAT. If you need, we can offer a CAN open solution or an EtherCAT solution to communicate between the drive and the PLC. Our PLCs, as you may know, can communicate with various uh, other pieces of equipment using Ethernet, Ethernet IP, uh, Profinet, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, our coordinated axes gearing and camming function blocks, and that is offered only with the EtherCAT version of our drives. For our servo motors, we offer 15 different torque options from 1.6 Newton meters all the way up to 24 Newton meters. Our motors are offered with two encoder options you can select an absolute encoder at the 23-bit encoder, giving you roughly a little over 8 million pulses per revolution um, of, of location, of positioning in uh, the encoder. You could also select an incremental encoder that is rated at 20 bits or just a, over 1 million pulses per revolution in positioning. And we offer our motors with two brake options. You can purchase our motors with a brake or without. And please note that the brake is used for static holding purposes only. It is not engineered to be a dynamic brake. We strongly suggest that you bring the motor to a stop electronically. And once the motor is stopped, then you engage the brake. It would be good for vertical applications if you're holding something and you need to ensure that it doesn't slip. Here on the screen, you see 
three reasons or advantages of using the unitronic servo motion. If you're looking for almost ultimate control of speed, torque, and or position, then servo motion is a great way to produce your, your motion and to respond to your motion needs. Again, almost ultimate control of speed, torque, and or position. The biggest advantage of using EtherCAT is the ability to coordinate four axes of motion. While our PLCs can handle eight axes of motion total, the EtherCAT advantage and the coordinated motion is limited to four axes. Also, a big advantage of using the EtherCAT version of our drives and motors is simple commissioning and our Unilogic software with the motion control function blocks already developed for you and provided in the Unilogic software. So diving a little deeper into the hardware, what is required to develop an EtherCAT servo motion application? Well, you need a few simple pieces of hardware. You need a PLC. And to use EtherCAT, you can select any of the Unistream PLCs. That is our controller family. And those PLCs have a virtual HMI. And I'll be demonstrating that in a few minutes. You also need an EtherCAT motion controller that connects to the PLC. Then for each axis of motion, you need a servo drive. That would be the UMD-E3 series servo drive. For each axis of motion, you would need a servo motor, the UMM series. And of course, a cable between the motor and the drive. So you would need a, a UMC series power cable and a UMC series feedback cable that go from the drive to the motor. So with that hardware, you now have an operating EtherCAT motion device. Here you see a picture of the Unistream PLC. That's uh, one of the USC series uh, B5 or C5 or B10 or C10 families of PLCs. Uh, of course, you need the Unilogic software. For the HMI, you need a device that can connect virtually using a VNC connection. That could be your laptop. That could be a HMI uh, light panel from Unitronics. That could be your iPhone or your iPad or whatever mobile device you have. Also, you need the COM module to operate as the motion master for EtherCAT. Between the PLC and the drives, you need an RJ45 cable. And then between from one drive to another, you would need an RJ45 Ethernet cable. So very simply, for communications, you connect one cable to the motion controller and you go into the first servo drive. And then you would come out of that servo drive and go to your second servo drive and then come out of the second servo drive and go into the third servo drive, et cetera, et cetera. And you are able to develop applications with a total of eight servo drives and motors, and four of those servo drives and motors can be used in a coordinated fashion. And lastly, hardware-wise, to power the Unistream PLC, you would need a 24-volt power supply. I suggest the UAP series power supply that's available in different wattages, all from Unitronics. Next up, I 
would like to spend some time exploring the Unilogic software. Uh, again, we're going to talk about uh, synchronized motion control using gearing and camming. Uh, I mentioned that you can uh, produce eight axes per PLC, and four of those axes can be synchronized in EtherCAT. And then the additional four would be discrete motion. Here's a uh, screenshot on the right of the Unilogic software, and we'll be getting into that live in a moment. So before we dive into the software, there is a second question that I would like to ask you, and I'll put that question up on the screen and I solicit your response. Very simply, I'm just asking you to rate yourself, your level of expertise using the Unilogic software. And I see that we're still collecting responses. Thank you very much for your input into our pop-up question number two. And it looks like the majority of you are identifying as intermediate or beginner uh, levels of expertise when it comes to Unilogic software. I'd like to think that you're in for a very happy surprise of how easy the Unilogic software is to develop your PLC applications and your motion control applications. There are uh, roughly one fifth of the attendees today are experienced or expert users of Unilogic. So thank you very much for all that knowledge, all that dedication. And uh, a little less than 20% uh, of the respondees uh, have no experience with Unilogic. So I'm going to close the uh, pop-up question and move on to the next screen in my presentation. So here's a screenshot of the Unilogic software. And on the left side, you have what is what we call our solution explorer. And in this section of the software, you're going to find where you can select the hardware that you're using. You can select the uh, drives and uh, motors for servos. You can select VFDs that you're using, any IO also. And then you get into the motion portion of the Solution Explorer. And then last but not least down at the bottom is uh, the actual area where you would create your lot or logic. There is more to the Solution Explorer that I'll show you in a second where you can configure uh, many different options and HMI screens. In the middle is what I call the core portion of the Unilogic software. Uh, this screenshot is showing the PLC with the EtherCAT communication motion master. And then on the right side of your screen, you'll find your toolbox and your properties window for all the uh, hardware uh, and accessories that you are um, selecting to use uh, in your machine and to be controlled with the Unilogic software. If I could ask you to hold one moment, please. I apologize for the interruption, and I was informed by one of my colleagues that I wasn't sharing my screen. 
So hopefully now you can see my screen. If you could just give me a, a quick yes, yeah, thank you, Jake. So I'm gonna go back. Um, we did the pop-up question number two. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we're we're uh, looking at the uh, Unilogic uh, main uh, screen for the Unilogic software. On the left is the Solution Explorer, uh, which is the tree of hardware, the tree of your ladder logic and your HMIs. In the middle is what I call the core area. And here uh, shown on the screen is a Unilogix, uh, a Unistream PLC with the EtherCAT motion controller. There we go, how's that? Now you can hopefully see the correct screen. So again, my apologies. And on the right uh, of the software screen, uh, you'll find your toolbox for selecting hardware and then properties windows for, for the hardware that is selected. Uh, just moving on, here's a, a closer up portion of the Solution Explorer. Uh, and I'll be showing this live here in a moment. And just a quick review in the Unilogic for EtherCAT servo motion. You're going to have to define your ladder logic under ladder. You're going to define your HMI portion that I'll show you here shortly. And uh, for camming, you have an area that's called data tables recipes, and that's where you develop and um, supply your cam recipes. So, uh, just to confirm, we've reviewed the hardware and uh, we're going to now, I'm going to show the ladder, uh, the Unilogic software. And if you could let me know that you can see the Unilogic software screen with nothing else shown. Um, if you could just let me know that through the question window, that would be great. Yes, great. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Eric. Super. So, as I uh, stated earlier, on the left side, you see your Solution Explorer. Here is the core central screen. Here is your toolbox and properties windows. So, and if we were to start a new software, we would first have to configure what hardware are we using? So you would go in and select your controller model. And in uh, the system that I have running here, uh, I have a USC um, B10, um, B1 version PLC. So you can see that here in the center screen and you can select your panel orientation for your virtual HMI uh, and your panel resolution. And then next you would select the IO uh, that you would want to connect to the PLC. So the software needs to know what IO is connected and there's a wide variety of IO for EtherCAT communication. You do need to select the UAC 01 EC2 motion master communication module. That's right here on the right side of the screen as shown. If you needed any remote IO, um, you could add that at this point. And then next, you would add the motion drives that you're using. Um, your software can run our servo drives or our VFDs. Today we're going to look at the servo drives and dig into uh, how many drives do we have. So you would just add the number of drives that you need. Today we have two drives in our example. Um, drive one is a UMD E3 series as is drive two. We also offer the B3 series which is the CAN open. But for EtherCAT, you wanna choose the E3 series. 
And then under properties for each drive, you would now select the motor that you're using and uh, the specific motor. So you pick the series and then the specific part number for the motor. And that gives you then, uh, would populate all the motor properties that you see here on the right side of the screen. So we have two drives selected. If I wanted to add a third drive, I could, excuse me, just go and, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah. There we go. If I wanted to add a third drive, I would go over to the toolbox, select the drive I want to add, and then just drop it into the software. So now we have three drives. I would then pick the proper motor series and the exact motor part number, and then all the motor properties would be defined here. My setup today only has two drives, so I don't want to um, screw things up. I will keep it two drives. If I needed a VFD or had a VFD that I wanted to control, again, I would click on VFDs and I would pick the correct series of VFDs and just drag and drop into the core window uh, and there's my VFD. The next portion of the software development in Unilogic involves defining the axes and you can at this point provide uh, names for your axes, you can change this. The default uh, that we put in here is axes one and axes, axes two. Um, if you want coordinated motion under mode, you would pick cyclic and not discrete. And again, with EtherCAT, you can have up to four axes of cyclic or coordinated motion. So you can define the name and uh, what operation mode, you can add a description if need be. And then if I drill down a little bit, here you can define the mechanical properties of the motors and any extra transmission devices that you're using on the motor, whether it's a gear, a belt and pulley, a roll feeder, a rotary actuator, that is all available here in the toolbox. We also define the unit. So the travel distance, one motor revolution is going to uh, show as 360. So we're talking in, in our software, we're talking in degrees. Your dynamics, your motion profile, start options, position options, Velocity options, torque options are all picked under the dynamic section here in the core screen, as is your homing methodology. And that's all defined here on the left under motion axes. You would do that for each axis that you have um, on your equipment, axis one or axis two uh, for today. Moving on, I'd, I'd like to review the ladder logic um, and then show you an example of the software running. So if you just bear with me one moment, I want to make sure we have the right page and we do. So. At this point, I would drop down to ladder, and for module one, you would have certain sections in your ladder logic. So today, there is a main section that's needed. There's a ladder section for axes one, a third ladder for axes two. We also have our function block ladder for gearing, that's gear out and gear in and also gear in position ladder function. And then last but not least, our sixth ladder in the software is for our camming. So let me show you uh, the motion. 
very simple. We're, we're just calling uh, functions. We're calling axes one, axes two. We're calling the function gear in and out, gear in position, and camming. We're also uh, reading axes one and axes two, the position for axes one, the position for axes two. If you click on the ladder for A1 or axes one, you need the MC power function block to supply power to the motor. You have it named and you have an enable bit. Then on the right side, you can have different outputs. If you wish to jog the motor, you would have to define these uh, portions of the function block. And today we're going to make relative moves. And so you would define uh, these areas of the function block. And just to let you know, if you hover over the function block, it is telling you what is ex what is expected there. So item A would be the axes, and we have that defined as axes one. And then item B would be to execute the move on the rising edge of the trigger. C would be continuous update. D is uh, the distance and then the velocity. Um, acceleration, deceleration, and jerk. And then on the right, you have your outputs of the function blocks. I could be a done signal, uh, J is busy signal, uh, active, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I don't wanna to dive too deeply into this today. I just want to give you a, a little flavor um, of the ladder logic. And then you need a axis one stop function block, an axis one homing function block, and a reset function block. And you would have the same thing for each axis. So here for A2, you have the same function blocks. Next up is our gearing function blocks. So we have a, a gear in and a gear out for axis one. And again, is if you were to hover over the function block, it would express what is required. And then a gear in position function block is needed if you want to do gearing. And then a camming function block ladder. So there would be a cam select and then a few other function blocks, cam in, cam out, et cetera, et cetera. To perform the camming functions. If you're to do camming, you need to develop recipes uh, or cam tables. So under this section in the software, you see data tables recipes, and let's take a look at cam recipe number one. Well, let me back up a second. Here we go. So data table recipes shows you that we have three recipes. If you wanted to add a new recipe, you could do that here or add a new cam recipe. You could do by clicking on the, the button here. And then it automatically will index, uh, provide an index number for each of the recipes. So recipe one is actually index zero. Now let's dive into the recipe itself. So we have two axes on our example. And if you look at cam recipe number one, you have a column for master position and then you have a column for slave position. So when the master axis is in position one, the slave position, uh, excuse me, yes, it's in position zero, the master position is going to be at zero degrees, and the slave position will be at zero degrees. When the master axis moves to 360 degrees, 
the slave motor is going to move half of that or 180 degrees. If I wanted to change that, I could double click. There's a pop-up window to change and you can set your new value. If I wanted to change that to 90, then I could just type in 90 and enter and there you go, it is changed here in the software. I'm going to move it back to 180 and set the value. So there you go. Uh, when the master position gets to 720 degrees, you're going to see the slave position goes back to zero. And then when it makes another revolution, it's going to, the slave will go to 180. And then on the third revolution, the fourth revolution of the master, the slave position is going to go back to zero. So basically in this application, the slave motor or axis two is acting sort of like a wiper where it goes from zero degrees to 180 degrees, then back to zero and then to 180 and so on and so forth. And it's going to do that for nine steps. And the steps, the number of steps or rows can be found in the properties window. If I wanted to add more rows, I could double click there. Let's say I wanted to add 12, uh, make it 12 rows total. And there you go. Then it's going from zero now to 11 or 12 rows total. Put that back to nine. So, so again, in cam recipe number one, you're going to have your master. And then the slave position is just going to oscillate between zero and 180. Let's see, cam recipe number two. Ah, okay. So for every uh, one rotation of axes one, the slave axis is going to rotate 90 degrees. So again, as we rotate 360 degrees on the master axis, the slave position is going to rotate 90 degrees. And let's see, axis number three, uh, recipe number three, uh, very similar to recipe number one, but here we're going to be um, moving backwards from zero to minus 180, zero to minus 180. So it's oscillating in the other direction. So as you can see, it's a very simple uh, to develop your ladder, the function blocks are all here on the right side in the toolbox. You have all the different categories of function blocks. All the servo function blocks are found under motion control. We discussed the uh, ladder, excuse me, the recipes uh, for camming and that is done under data table recipes. And then the last portion of the software that I want to talk to, uh, talk about would be the HMI. So under HMI, uh, we basically, we have one module to run module one of the ladder, and we have a screen for gearing and a screen for camming. Gearing, camming. So with that all said, uh, let me talk about some of the, uh, again, under the toolbox, you can find all the elements uh, to develop a very powerful HMI. And then under the property windows is where you would set uh, colors and, and um, inputs, outputs, uh, display width and height, et cetera, et cetera, uh, under the property windows of, of the uh, HMI element. So now let's dive into the software. So I'm going to close this screen and I'm going to exit my PowerPoint. And now I'm going to start my VNC viewer that will communicate from my laptop to
to the PLC. Can everyone see the HMI menu? Okay, you can see the HMI menu. And now I'm going to turn on my webcam. And hopefully what you see on the webcam are two motors. Uh, in the background, you can see the PLC, the power supply. On the left side here are the two drives for the motors. And we're going to go in and I'll show you how easy it is to operate the HMI uh, from the software that we just reviewed. So let's do a gearing application. Um, so first off, I would want to enable both drives by clicking here. And then I would want to home the drive. So each drive in its position, I just set the home positions as they are now. Click reset. And for gearing, I'm going to do a simple one-to-one uh, -one gearing application. So, uh, but because I have the slave axes as a negative one, uh, the master axis is going to rotate in one direction and the slave axis is going to rotate in the other direction. So I click gear in and now I'll click move. Before I do that, I did set the target distance for axis one as 200, excuse me, 2880 degrees and the speed would be 360 degrees per second. So when I click move, you're going to see the position change and the velocity change for both axes. And you can probably see that on the webcam. So there you go. So axes one ended up in position 2,880 because that was my target distance. And axis two actually ended up in minus 200, excuse me, 2,880, because I had it going in a negative direction. If I wanted to change, I would then stop both axes. I would, uh, let's say we want to do a, um, um, a two to one. So we want a two to one gear ratio between the master and the slave. So I would reset the positions, reset the drive. So we're both now homed and I select gear in. And let's see what happens. So as you see, the slave is moving twice as fast as the master axes and both stopping where they started. On the HMI screen, you can see the position for axes one went to 2,880, but because the slave or axis two was commanded to go twice as far, uh, that is 5,760. So that is a good example of the gearing. I'm going to stop. I'm going to rehome the drives. I click reset for the drives. And now let me show you an example of camming. So again, uh, after each move, I click stop, I home, and then reset. And this can all be automated in your logic, in your ladder. Uh, I just chose to do it manually to show you how easy it is to do by hand. So uh, let's pick uh, cam index number two. And I clicked on the on the screen, it, op it popped up a window, I put in two, I click okay. Then I'm going to select that cam table. And I'm going to cam in, I'm going to engage the cam table. And let's see if I click A1 move. 
you can see that the master axis is rotating while the slave axis is oscillating back and forth, just like the CAM table specified. I'm going to stop. I'm going to CAM out. I'm going to rehome, reset, and let's pick CAM index number zero. See, well, yeah, let's do uh, it's cam index number zero, which is cam recipe number one. So now that I chose zero, I'm going to select, I'm going to choose cam in. I homed, so we're both at uh, position zero on both axes, and I'm going to move relative. And just like the first example, the master axis is rotating while the slave axis is oscillating back and forth. Hopefully you could see that on the webcam window. So I select, uh, when I'm done, I select cam out. I'm going to stop, I'm going to home, I'm going to reset. And last but not least, let's pick cam index number one, which is cam recipe number two. I'm going to select, I'm going to cam in, and now I'm going to move. So the slave axis is going every 90 degrees, stopping, and then meeting axis one, just as the cam table specified. And these cam tables can be developed for whatever purposes, I believe you're limited up to 100 rows in the CAM table. Uh, on the screen, I didn't talk much about it. We're running out of time here, but um, I did have a graph of the position for both axes. Um, so at this point, I'm going to close my virtual HMI window. I'm going to return to my PowerPoint. And there you go. So you've stayed with us so far. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it's time for a pop-up question number three. So let me pick that and launch the question as we wrap up today's webinar. If you could just um, let me know uh, if you are uh, interested or your interest level in learning more about Unitronics, Unilogic, and our servo motion via Ethernet. And we will, we are recording these responses. So um, if you need immediate assistance, we will reach out to you as soon as possible. Uh, somewhat interested, um, you might get a secondary call in a few weeks. Um, I will provide contact information in the next screen. So uh, you will always have a way of uh, reaching out to us if your needs change and you change, if your needs change and you need uh, assistance right away. So it looks like we've collected all the responses. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to close uh, the window here. And then last but not least, your special offer. Thank you again for attending. If you would like, you can send me an email. My email address is at the bottom. And in the subject line, if you put Unitronics EtherCAT webinar, I will then send you a copy of the two axes EtherCAT program that we demonstrated today. And with this program, you can import it into the Unilogic and use it as a basis of, for your EtherCAT motion control. Also in that email, we will send you links or I will send you links to online training webinars uh, that have been recorded in the past. These webinars are very valuable uh, to learn the basics of Unilogic and uh, all, the, uh, all the fun stuff that you can do with it to develop a 21st century piece of automation. I'll also include the uh, documentation and selection guide for our servo motion products. 
So thank you. Thank you very much. Again, if you send me an email, you'll get a copy of the program that we used today. And uh, last but not least uh, is pop-up question number four. And that's just to gauge uh, if you found this webinar to be valuable. And with that, we'll, we'll uh, look for your questions and hopefully provide you answers. So you can go to the questions window and type in your questions. I thank you for attending. Uh, this concludes the formal presentation of today's webinar. On the screen, you have the contact information for myself. I am Walter Stridick. Thomas Gomes, our senior application engineer. His phone number and email address are located on the screen. And uh, let's see, I see Thomas is still online. I'm going to open up my, um, my questions window and see uh, if there's any questions that we can respond. So there was a, a question regarding uh, the master axes and can it be virtual or must it be a physical device? And at this time, in this version of the Unilogic software, the master axes cannot be virtual. It must be a physical device. Very good. Can more than one EtherCAT motion master module be connected? No, only one EtherCAT motion master module can be connected per PLC. So you are limited to four axes of coordinated motion and four axes of discrete motion per PLC. Thank you, John Fabian, for the shout out. Best method of halting motion in an e-stop event. There are function blocks for that purpose, Jamie. So you would not uh, damage the drive circuitry uh, when you employ the correct function block. You can also define how quickly uh, the motors do come to a halt. Uh, there is a, a concern of regenerative power going back from the motor to the drive. Uh, there are filters and braking resistors available from Unitronics to help you manage those types of events. Uh, there's a question here about uh, the same principles um, in the function blocks to control uh, bigger motors uh, with VFDs. So the, the VFD function blocks are completely different set of function blocks in the Unilogic software. Um, if you wish, you can go to the Unitronics website, download the U Unilogic software, uh, you register, and then you're able to use that software and take a look at the VFD function blocks. But in essence, yes, but they would not be servo function blocks. They would be VFD function blocks, Alan. All right, yeah, these are these are great. I see Thomas is still responding to some of the questions. Um, at this point, there is n no product roadmap to provide 575 volt power options for the Canadian market. Uh, the servos are rated up to 440 volts AC. Um, you could use a step up transformer if you needed, uh, or excuse me, a step down transformer uh, if you had 575 and um, needed to drop down to the, the 440, 480 volt. And before we end today's webinar, the one last question, do we have a safety rated drive? And the answer, Michael, is no. At this time, we do not have a servo drive that have any STO circuit. We do offer VFDs with STO, but we do not have any servo drives with uh, a safety rating. 
So I would suggest you go to uh, uh, Pills or one of those th uh, you know third-party companies that specialize in safety uh, to to get the product you need to make your machine uh, properly safety rated. Well, thank you, everyone. It's uh, again, I appreciate your time. And at this point, uh, you have the contact information. Uh, I am going to end the webinar here in a moment. One last shout out for any questions. Yep. Great questions today. Very good. Well, again, thank you very much for your time and attention. And uh, I wish you all a good day and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks uh, for your interest in Unitronics. And please let us know how we could be of any help to you. Take care. Have a great day.